Ivy and welcome to worship. Before we begin, a few reminders and announcements. The first is on Sunday, September 1st, the Deacon's Collection will be taken to help support the Crop Walk. On Wednesday, September 4th, the Church Council will meet at 6 o'clock at the church. And on Sunday, September 8th, we hope you will join us for Rally Sunday. Uh, this service will be held at 1015. We will not have a 915 service that day. Um, the 1015 service will be outside, weather permitting. Um, so please bring your chairs, bring a potluck item for our church picnic afterwards. Um, the service will include a blessing of the backpacks, so any students can bring their backpacks and have them blessed for the new school year. Um, and we will be um, hosting Surround Sound, who will be there to sing. So again, we hope you'll join us for Rally Sunday on Sunday, September 8th. This coming week, we'd like to wish a very happy birthday to Todd Chasen on the 25th. Lauren Witz on the 27th, Carter Ch Chadwick on the 28th, and a happy anniversary to Henry and Ellen Martin on the 28th as well. Now, as we turn our hearts and minds to worship, let us consider these words. God's love is faithful. God's love is forever. God's love is as faithful as the moon's appearance. God's love is as eternal as the heavens above. So come, let us praise God. I invite you to join now in our call to worship by responding in the words in uppercase bold type. O oh God, you showed favor to your servant David. Anoint us also with your holy oil. Your hands are always ready to help us. Your arms give us strength. Your true love is ever with us. In your name, we will hold our heads high. You are our Lord. You are our God. Blessed is the Lord forever. Let us pray. God of our yesterdays, todays, and tomorrows, we thank you and praise you for all that you are and all that you do. We thank you for all the moments in our lives when you carried us. We praise you for all the moments you danced with us. We thank you for this moment when you have called us together in this place. As we gather to worship you, O oh God, we ask that you make us ever more aware of the work you are doing in us, through us, and around us. Remind us again that we are not yet finished and that you are doing a new thing with every breath we take. We thank you that we are not the sum of our mistakes, but rather your creatures full of potential and possibility and made in your image. We ask that you stir within us the confidence to live into the promise you have planted within each of our hearts. Help us to encourage others to live into their full potential as well. We ask that you help us to open our hearts and lives to you so that we may continue to do your work We ask that you bring healing where healing is needed. Bring wholeness where there is only broken pieces. Bring peace where there is discord and unity where there is strife. We ask your blessing upon all those that we hold in the quiet recesses of our hearts. We pray these things in the name of your son, Jesus, who taught us to pray together, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, 
and the glory forever. Amen. The scripture lesson today comes from the second book of Samuel, chapter 7, verses 1 through 14. Now when the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now, therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may live in their own place, and be disturbed no more. An evildoer shall afflict them no more, as formerly, from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. When your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring after you, who shall come forth from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. When he commits iniquity, I will punish him with a rod, such as mortals use, with blows inflicted by human beings. Here ends our reading. May God add to our understanding of it. Several years ago, I was stopped by a Mass State Trooper for speeding in a work zone. When he asked why I was speeding, I answered honestly. I knew that I was in an area marked by work zone signs. However, those signs had been in place for weeks. And each time I passed through, there was never any work being done. When the first signs were first in place, I abided by the lowered speed limits. However, after weeks of angry drivers behind me blowing their horns, I decided that there was no work being done, so it really wasn't a work zone. The trooper explained to me that the primary, while well, the primary reason for reduced speed in work zones is the safety of the work crews, that even when it appears that no work is happening, there might be hazards in the road or other dangers that aren't visible until it's too late if a driver is going too fast. That day, the numerous trucks and workers caught me off guard. But as soon as I noticed that there was work being done, I slowed down. Unfortunately, it was too late. After a hefty fine, 
I learned my lesson. I now always slow down in work zones, whether or not there's any visible work being done. How often we fail to notice. Or maybe we remember that God's at work in us and through us and around us. How often do we zoom through a work zone certain nothing's happening? How often do we just speed through those work zones? In our scripture lesson this morning, David plans to build God a new house. But God has other plans. God tells David, I don't need you to build me a house. I'm busy building something in and through and with you. We come to learn that what God is building is the house of Jesus or the lineage of Jesus. While David had good intentions when he talked about building a new home for God, God had other plans. Plans that were already taking form. Plans that had already been set in place. And just like me, failing to recognize that there was indeed work happening in the work zone, David failed to notice that God was at work in him. Even when it seems that God maybe is taking a rest, there's still work happening. That work happens in us and around us and through us. And even when it seems that those work zone signs have been hanging on our hearts for weeks with nothing happening, God is at work. Even if that work isn't readily available or readily visible, there are many reasons we need to pay attention and be on the lookout for whatever work is being done, because God is always, always, always at work. In his book, The Americanization of Edward Bach, Edward Bach, a one-time editor of the Ladies' Home Journal, tells a story about his grandfather who lived in Denmark. It seems the grandfather had been commissioned by the King of Denmark to lead a band of soldiers against pirates who were playing havoc with shipping along a certain coastal area. The elder Bach set up his headquarters on a lonely, rocky, desolate island just off the coast. And after a few years, was able to clear the pirates after, out of the area. Upon returning to the mainland, Bach reported to the king, who was very pleased and offered Bach anything he wanted. All he wanted he told the king, was a plot of land on the island where he had just lived and fought for so many months. They told him the island was barren. Why would he want to live there? I want to plant trees, he replied. I want to make the island beautiful. The king's aides thought he was crazy. The island was constantly swept by storms and high winds. He would never be able to get trees to grow there. But Bach insisted, so the king granted his wish. And off he went to live on the island, and he built a home, and he was finally able to bring his wife to it. For years, they worked industriously, persistently, planting trees, shrubs, grass. Gradually, the vegetation took hold, and the island began to flourish. One morning, they arose to hear birds singing. There had never been any birds on the island before. Eventually, the island became a showplace. It's now visited by thousands of tourists each year. When he died, the grandfather requested that the following words be inscribed on his tombstone. Make you the world a bit more beautiful and better because you have been on it. The story doesn't end there, though. Edward Bach, the grandson who had become an American citizen, believed that anyone who was able to do so should retire at 50 and spend the rest of their lives making the world a more beautiful and a better place to live. And he was good as his word. At 50, he retired as the editor of the Ladies' Home Journal. 
One day while travel traveling around central Florida, he came upon Iron Mountain, elevation 324 feet above sea level, the highest point in Florida. Immediately the thought hit him, why not repeat in America what his grandfather had done in the old country? So he bought the site and set to work. Eventually he was more than successful. The place is called Mountain Lake Sanctuary in Lake Wales, Florida. Upon his death, Edward Bach willed it to the state of Florida and it's now a major tourist attraction. Upon the younger Bach's um, headstone were the words, make you the world a bit more beautiful and a better place because you have been in it. Our scripture lesson this morning reminds us that God is at work. God's at work even, maybe especially, in those places that seem lifeless. God is at work even in those places that seem as if the work zone signs have been abandoned. God is at work in those places that seem desolate and forgotten. God is at work. I think of those words, make you the world a bit more beautiful and the, a better place because you've been in it. And I think that's truly the mark of God at work in us and through us and around us. No matter what our intentions or goals or plans, God works through us and in us and around us to make the world a bit more beautiful and a better place. No matter our plans, God works in us and through us and around us to make us more beautiful. As we consider all the ways that God is at work, I want to close by sharing the songs of a lyric, the lyrics of a song I learned as a young girl in Sunday school. Every once in a while, these words pop back into my head, reminding me that God indeed is at work even when it seems as, that, as if the work zone has been left abandoned. The simple song is titled, He's Still Working On Me. And the lyrics read, He's still working on me to make me what I need to be. It took just a week to make the moon and stars, the sun, the earth, and Jupiter and Mars. How loving and patient God must be, because God's still working on me. There really ought to be a sign upon my heart. Don't judge me yet. There's an unfinished part. But I'll be better just according to God's plan, fashioned by the master's loving hand. Each of us is a work in progress, a work zone still being developed and formed. God is working in you and through you and around you to make you and the world around you a more beautiful place. Let us pray. Loving God, remind us again and again that you are at work. Help us to help your work rather than impede it. Amen. My friends, I hope everybody has a good week. I hope you remember God still at work in you and around you. So make the world a more beautiful place. Bye-bye. Blessed be the Lord forever. Let us go in peace.